That is absolutely brilliant. Hey, how's it going and welcome along. I'm Rory from Break My Funeral. That was right, by the way. So, another exciting tech review video. And once again, the absolutely fantabulous people over at box.co.uk have sent me some toys. So just a reminder, box.co.uk is an online reseller where you can get all sorts of great techie cool stuff. So I thoroughly recommend checking out their website. And everything that I mentioned in this video will be linked in the description below. So feel free to check that out. Now, what have they sent me? Two things today. The first thing is this. This is the Flash Forge Creator Pro 2. Is that the right name? I think it is. So this is a dual nozzle 3D printer. So it's got two print heads. <laughs> bang, bang. I, I'm, I'm really excited to find out how this is gonna work. And the other thing is this PLA Pro. Gemini. I have no idea as to the difference between PLA and PLA Pro other than PRO. I'm gonna give it a try. We'll open it up and see what it's like. That's coming later. We'll try it when we get the printer all done. Now this is my third Flash Forge printer that I've had a really good play with. My original Flash Forge Finder was where I began with my 3D printing journey. And then Box were good enough to send me the Flash Forge Guider 2, massive beastie, which I reviewed. And this is the latest one for me to try out. And I have to admit, I'm really excited to see how it works. We'll do a little bit more in this one today. I won't just print my Benchy and kind of leave it at that. We'll do a few little projects because this has got the dual heads I want to try and find something that will uh, sort of make use of that and see how it works. And it should be one that's kind of out of the box, ready to go. But we're not going to know until we get it out of the box. As always, I need something to get me in here. What have I got? <laughs> that joke does not get old. What do you mean it does? Ooh. We start off with a quick start guide. And it's got a little 16 gig SD card in there. Also here in the top polystyrene, I've got these two uh, tubes. Okay, so simple, straightforward packaging. It was in sort of polystyrene and now it's wrapped in this. I think even I can handle this one. The gear is all inside it. Right. Ooh. I just caught this front for a second. I thought it was all cracked. It's the Peely. Don't panic, it's fine. <laughs> okay, so this looks quite nice. This is very tidy, tidily all put together. Very good, very good, I like it. Once again, we have a QR code with some instructions on the side, so they've thought of all the bits. So we have, there's our two print heads, two reel holders, power supply, some print stick. Oh no, sorry, some non print stick branded stick glue thing. Scraper, screws, a few little tools, USB cable. And that's pretty much it. So it's tidy. It's got everything you need, but it's tidy. So we have some more foam. Oh, it comes with some filaments. This might be like the guide though, where I have to turn it on in order to get the polystyrene out from the inside. Peely everywhere. Ah, so this is the lid, uh, which will ultimately go on the top. Oh, it's got two reels of filament. Oh, I feel absolutely honored. And 100%, I'm gonna have to raise this bed in order to get all of this polystyrene now. So all of the insides are currently held in using uh, cable ties. Now, one thing that's sad is it doesn't come with any snips, so I've gotta go and try and find mine. Now, where have I put them? Seriously? So there are... So there are four of these yellow plastic things that are just holding all the bars in place. Make sure you take them out <laughs> before trying to turn it on. So with the printer comes two reels of PLA filament, one blue, one white. That's very generous of them actually. There's so many printers where you just get a silly little test piece that's useless. It's nice to see the printers coming with some filament. Okay, just gonna chuck some power into it just to raise the bed so that I can lift this out of the way. There you go, my friend, you are free. Quick tea break. So 
So inside of the quick start guide, we get a second debris for going on the bed. So our print heads, uh, it appears that we just literally place on these little cradles here. So we just place that there. And the other one. Then each one underneath has some little bolt holes. So we have to bolt into to hold them in place. So I'll just go ahead and do that. Okay, that screws in both. Looks pretty cool in there, if you ask me. On the back, very, very simple. Done! And now my two hoses, I guess, clip into here, and then down into the hole there. There we go, there we go. You have to give it a bit of a clicky click. Now an important thing to note is when you have your two reels on here, it kind of feels like you're supposed to go from this reel up to this tube, this reel up to this tube, but you don't. You must cross over. So you go from this reel up to this tube, this reel up to this tube. Little tip there for ya. Okay, so you have these two little, they're called anti-overflow boards. And up there, there are two screw holes. And I have a feeling that they're supposed to go in there. So I'm gonna attach them in there and see if that's right. This now sits under there. And as the nozzle moves across, this obviously just gives it a wipe to stop it dripping everywhere. Ta-da! Boom, right, okay. So we have our printer set up. Really very easy. There were 16 screws to put in, which wasn't really a headache. We're now ready to go. We're ready to load up the software. But then we'll print a Benchy because that's where I always start. Then we'll have a look at this PLA Pro. Okay, so welcome over here to the PC where I have my nice microphone and I'm able to make my voice all silky smooth and nice and nice. I don't know what I'm talking about. Right, anyway, sorry. I'll get on with it. I'll do what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm going to run the Flash Print software. We're going to install it. That's right. We're going to install the software and we're going to use it. Mad, right? First of all, it needs to compute. It needs to computing my space requirements. I want to go Mars. I figured this would be quicker than this. Okay, it's computed. So now we're going to just, uh, we're going to next probably through most of this, to be honest with you. Okay, so that is all done. So I'm going to go ahead and say, yes, please do launch Flash Print. Now I have to admit, I actually really like Flash Print as a, as a software. This was the first one I ever used. Uh, it wants me to choose the machine type. So we're gonna go create a pro and we'll go, okay. Right. Ooh, we can, we can upgrade our firmware. Uh, to be fair, I'm quite familiar with it. It's nice. It's really simple to use. It does a really nice thing. There's a feature of Flash Print, which is it adds thumbnails to your STL files. So if you open up your folder with your STL files in, uh, you'll actually see a preview of them, which there are other ways to make it happen, but just installing this software, whether you use it or not, does that feature. So that's actually brilliant. And I often have this installed even if I'm not planning to use a, a Flash Forge. But anyway, whatever. So so this is this is it. So next we need to get our Benchy and throw it in. So all we do is click and drag our Benchy.stl in. Uh, it wants to repair it, fine. Do whatever you want to do. And there she blows. So we have our Benchy, we have our Benchy sitting there, uh, ready to be sliced. Um, obviously right now I'm not taking advantage of the fact that there's a dual extruder. I'm just gonna print a Benchy to see, kind of, you know, what, what do we go through to get to that stage? Okay, so now we just gotta print it. It's pretty straightforward, but first I'm just gonna go into preferences and change the printing window type from basic to expert mode. Um, you don't really need to do that, but it makes me feel a little bit better about myself. Like I'm smarter than I really am. Uh, so, so anyway, well, we get a few more options here now, basically. So we can be a little bit more specific. Now, the couple of things I do want to change is supports. I want to make sure is on no and raft. I also want to make sure is on no. And then I'll just press OK. It'll ask me where I want to save it. So I'll just save it there, whatever. It will then slice the model up all into layers. And there we can see our model is now sliced up and that is absolutely fine. So now we have our G code so we can save that to an SD card or we can plug in via the USB directly from the PC into the printer and just have it start printing and, and whatever. However, before we actually start the print, we've got to just do a couple of things. There's a few calibration things we've got to do on the printer, then we can start printing. So as mentioned earlier, I have here the Gemini PLA Pro and that is what I'm going to start off by using. So as you can see, it's, uh, it's pretty nice. As I say, whether it's actually any different in terms of the print quality, Let's find out. So to load the filament on this thing is super, super easy. All you do is simply go to tools and then filament and we do load. 
I've chosen the left extruder. I've mounted my filament on the right hand side and I've poked it up through the tube to go to the left hand side print head. It's now positioned the print heads in the right place and it is heating up. Once this gets to the right temperature, all we do is just give the filament a little push from the back and there's a little lever, you pull that down and the filament goes in. Easy. So that's now at temperature. And one thing I would definitely say is not to touch this. Ah! That's just a joke, it's just a joke. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so silly. No, just don't touch these hot ends. They are really, really hot. I know it seems obvious, but I have done it without thinking. And yeah, it, oh, we didn't even push down. It has pulled the filament through and it started to work. Crazy. So now when, whenever we're ready, creating our little Mr. Whippy there, we just hit done and that will stop. And we can just pull that out Okay, so our left extruder is loaded and we're ready to go. So next I'm gonna level the bed. Now this is pretty straightforward. It's not automatic, you do have to do it manually, but you basically you have to line up the bed using these three nuts. But first of all, we just hit level. Now we just need to screw the nuts counterclockwise. Cockwise? Now we need to screw the nuts counterclockwise until they're sort of all tightened. So they're now all done. It comes with this piece of uh, stuff. I'm just gonna pop that under there and I'm going to start unwinding that until it slightly touches our piece of paper. Okay, I can just feel a little bit of resistance, so I'd say that's about right. So next, do the same thing with the rear left and finally with the rear right. And if all's gone to plan, our bed is now level. So next we need to calibrate the Z axis, or Z if you're an American, and it's decided that it wants to cool down before it does that, so let's give it a minute. Okay, so that's ready, so it wants me to choose an extruder. I've chosen the right hand side, just because it's nearer. Card goes underneath, and I believe we do the same thing again, right? Now I do it with the left side. So that's the Z done, we're now onto the X. This was the reason why I already put in the filament is because for the X calibration, it will print one line from each nozzle and you have to adjust them on the screen to ensure that they're aligned. Simple, right? printed the line, we now just have to align it a little. Yeah. This side still needs to come over a little bit more. Now we move on to the Y calibration. So basically this is exactly the same thing again, but the line's going the other way. And first time it's come out perfect, so I don't even need to adjust that. Job's a good one. Okay, that is all the calibration done. This is now ready to receive my Benchy G-code, or GX as it's known for the Flash Forge. And uh, let's see how that prints. Okay, so, Benchy is done. And on the standard settings, that took an hour and 28 minutes. With a bit of tweaking, you could probably get that down to an hour, but that's about typical for these machines, I'd say. Let's see if we can get it off the bed. Okay, that came off actually quite easily. And in all honesty, that has printed exceptionally well. Perhaps it's to do with the PLA Pro, and perhaps it's to do with the printer, but the combination certainly works. The, you can see that the layer lines on this are super, super smooth. The arches have printed pretty well. The overhangs, considering this is actually a stress test model, this has come out superbly. Yeah, super impressed with that. Really good. Right, now I'm going to set something to print that uses two colors. So let me go find a model and let's see what that comes out like. 
Okay, so now I'm going to try something that uses two colors. Now the way this works is we have two STLs, which will basically have the 3D model in the same place. Now the first one I'm going to do is this question mark block. And here if I drag in the second one, it'll say it's off the platform. I'm gonna say no, because I want it to come on in exactly the same point. So these two are now really well lined up. If I grab one of them, you'll see it leaves the other behind. So you don't wanna do that. <laughs> You need to, if you're gonna move them, make sure you press Control A and grab both. And I'm just gonna plop it near the front of the screen. The next I need to assign a nozzle to each part. I will select Extruder here, and make sure that I have clicked on the main, and I want the main to use the right extruder, which it is, so it's gray. And then I'll click on the question mark the other model and press use the left extruder. So now we can see the difference in the two colors. We're now basically ready to go. If I hit print, right, a few things that I will change in here is I'm going to drop this one just down to low. I'm curious to know what the low setting prints like. And I am going to go to supports and say no raft. And I'm going to say no and additions. So the thing that's in here that's actually quite important when you're printing with dual extruders is this wall option. And what this does is it prints like a cocoon around the object as it's printing. And the idea is that it gets rid of any slightly excessy filament that's sitting on the nozzle. Now, obviously you've got the, those blockers that we added earlier, but you could still get a little bit here and there. So the idea of the wall is to kind of reduce that as much as possible, but that would make it look really rubbish for a time-lapse because you're basically just seeing a solid block being printed. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that off for now. Uh, and we'll, maybe we'll try that a bit later on. So that should all be now fine. I'm just gonna go ahead and print it and see what it's like. So there we have that one. Now it's printed okay. One of the things that I noticed about a quarter of the way through the print was that the orange was very clearly too hot and it was kind of looping up a bit, which is I think why you would have the wall on. However, I decided I could just lower the temperature during the print uh, and it's kind of fixed it up uh, from the halfway point onwards. And it, it definitely looks better towards the top than it does towards the bottom. The base is pretty good for a first layer and inside's a little bit stringy from earlier on. Again, it's to do with the heat. If you're getting stringing on your prints, quite often it's just because you, your hot end's too hot. So you just gotta reduce your temperature a little bit there and your stringing will often go away. Uh, also, obviously I did it on the low, so uh, the fast setting. It's, it's not bad. I definitely think it would look a lot better with the higher quality setting and so on. But now let's have a go at something else. Cool, right, the next one I'm going to print is this little kind of spaceman. So I'll just click and drag these in. Uh, oh, it's saying, do I want to put it on the platform? I'm going to press no, because I don't want to adjust where it's going to position. Uh, I don't want it doing anything automatically, because if I press yes, it will whiz off somewhere anyway. So that's my little Martian. So again, I'm going to move. I'm going to press Control A to select all and just bring him nearer the front so we can actually see what we're looking at. Again, we need to make sure we select extruder and then choose which item. So I'm going to do the visor as black and the body I want to be in white. So I'll use the left for that. And again, that's pretty much it. So we'll go ahead and press print. This time I'm going to change it to PLA. I'm gonna leave it on standard and I'm going to say no to supports. I'm gonna say no to raft. And again, I'm gonna do it without the wall just to sort of see what it's like. I think I might follow up with the exact same print again, but with the wall. So anyway, we'll just get this saved onto the SD card. Let's get it in the printer and see how it looks.
<laughs> that is absolutely brilliant. This is wonderful. You can see that there are some little, there was a slight markings on it. And again, that's where I believe I had the temperature of the black just a little bit too hot. So we've just got some a little bit of stringing that's gone into the white areas a little. So out of curiosity, I wondered what would happen if I printed it with the wall enabled. So I did another print. I didn't time lapse that one because obviously it would look a bit naff, just a big blob. Now you can see it's definitely made a small difference, but in all honesty, not enough to warrant the additional two hours that it required. This thing was just over seven hours to print, but with the wall, it was nine and a half hours. So in my opinion, looking at this, I would say I wouldn't want the wall on. I would just want to make sure I get all my temperatures right. And again, the base is really good. It's really sharp. It's come out really, really well. Super, super impressed with it. Well, now we've done some fun stuff. Let's have a look at five things I dislike about this printer. While this printer is not absolutely huge, the size of the footprint is not very relative to the size of the bed. You get quite a small bed with this. I have to admit, after being spoiled with some printers with really big beds, this for me is really annoying. And it's fixed in place, so I can't do the take it off and flex it to remove the print thing. There's no Wi-Fi on this printer, so you cannot send things to it wirelessly. In order to print from it, you either have to plug in the USB cable into your PC or put the files onto an SD card and then put them into the little socket on the side. So the same as every other Flash Forge I've ever played with, it's loud. I mean, it's not so loud that it's unbearable, but it's just quite loud. There's a permanent hum whenever it's on and the movement inside. It's not quiet. While the bed leveling is quite easy to do, it's a faff. I've been spoiled with other printers that do it automatically. So to have to play around with these is really irritating. I also find them quite slippery, so I have real trouble grabbing onto these smooth, slippery nuts. That sounds absolutely awful. Having dual nozzles is great on one hand, but bad in another. In that when it comes to maintenance with a 3D printer, most of your time is spent messing around with the print head. And if you've got two, that means you've got double the amount of effort to deal with. So it's definitely a double-edged sword. Now you might be thinking, Rory, you hate this printer, right? Absolutely not, it couldn't be further from it. Let's have a look at five things that I absolutely love about this printer. So again, something from Flash Forge is that they are always super, super easy to use. The controls of it are all done through this lovely color touchscreen. It's super easy to use, it's a joy. As you saw, you take this out of the box and you're printing straight away. And there's a lot to be said for ease of entry into a hobby that is really quite fiddly. So there are the flash print software that comes with these is absolutely brilliant. Again, it's got a really low learning curve, so you can get messing around with it almost straight away. And as I mentioned before, it gives you thumbnails in Windows, which is brilliant. Being that it's completely enclosed with this lid and this front door means that printing ABS is a lot easier than if it was all open and the environment is interfering with your temperatures. That's really useful. I actually love the look of this printer. I think it looks really neat, it looks really slick. This is something that you're really proud to have sitting on a shelf and when people come around and go, whoa, what's that? I just think it looks great. I've always been blown away by Flash Forge printer's print quality. Like the prints really, really print super super clean and smooth and they're just an absolute joy to watch print. I absolutely love the fact that I can print the supports for a model using soluble filament which means that you can print really complex models with really bad overhangs and not have to then dig away trying to tear off all of the support material. That's, that is absolutely brilliant. I just really wished I'd ordered some so I could actually try it. Note for next time. And there we have it. All in all Another printer that is actually really good. The whole dual nozzle thing, really nice feature. I like it. I'd love to know if you've had any experience with Flash Forge, because so far I've had only good experiences with them. So once more, I'd just like to thank Box.co.uk for sending me this printer. Remember, the link to where you can grab one of these from is in the description below. And if you did enjoy this video, please do remember, hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. And if you are, click the little bell to make sure you get notified when I put up a new video. If you haven't seen one of my ragdoll animation videos, you should probably check them out because they're quite fun. So that is basically it from me and the Flash Forge Creator Pro 2. I look forward to seeing you again. And, oh yeah, bye for now.